video, I'm going to be showing you a really fun pizza nail art design where it looks like you can take a piece of the pizza off like somebody took a bite. This one is sculpted on my practice finger, so you get a little benefit of knowing how to sculpt with it if you haven't learned. It's always fun just to watch the process of sculpting too, at least for me, it's very satisfactory. But as you are looking at your little pizza nail, that little tip just pops off. This nail actually requires it to be sculpted in order for it to be really thin. So it's just a really fun one and it's got a little bonus thing. I love it when any nail design or anything just has kind of a little surprise element. I hope you like it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe so my future videos as well. So we are going to begin by fitting a form to either your nail, your client's nail, your practice finger, whatever the case may be. Grab a form and you're going to open up the back for this and you're going to fit it onto the nail. When you're sculpting a stiletto, you typically want your form to be angled down ever so slightly. So you might have a little bit of an overlap at the back where your form is closed. Otherwise, it may just be closed really tightly. A lot of times with forms, sometimes they're opened up a little bit wider, like if you're sculpting a style that has a little bit of an up tip. But for a stiletto, you do want it to have that slight slant down or at least be level now we're going to take and we're going to be sculpting our free edge of our nail down so you're going to take clear acrylic and as thin as you possibly can you're going to extend the tip of the nail out as long as you want your stiletto to be and because we are making a slice of pizza and pizzas are typically triangular unless they are like a deep dish or a thin crust but you know your regular hand tossed pizza is going to be triangularly cut we do need to have a stiletto because that'll give you that triangle triangle to shape just right from the beginning. So as you're sculpting your little shape of your nail, imagine where you want the different bites to be. If you want to have one bite taken out of your pizza, put one magnet embedded into this clear portion of the nail. If you want two bites gone, then put in two magnets, three bites, three magnets. You get the idea. I'm going to do two. I would say for this length of nail that I have, you could do probably up to four, maybe even five if you were really getting kind of creative with it and wanted to go farther down the nail. Do keep in mind though that it is, the more you do, the trickier it becomes and probably the less precise they're going to fit together. So it's kind of a balance between how many bites you want to come out of the nail and how flawless you want the nail to look when they're all in place. After you have those magnets in, you're going to very carefully encapsulate the nail. And when I say carefully, I don't necessarily mean like, oh, be careful where you put the acrylic, but just do so so that you fully cover the magnets. You just wanna make sure that they are completely encapsulated at least around the circumference. If there's a little bit of a height on them, that's actually just fine. Now we're going to file the free edge of the nail, file the surface a little bit, just kind of smooth it out. I am then going to take and cleanse the nail with acetone. I usually don't cleanse the nail with acetone at this point, but you do want to, you want to smooth that out really well. Using a pencil, I'm going to just doodle out the shape where I want the, the different bites to be. And then with some acrylic, I'm going to begin sculpting out the piece of pizza that is not yet bitten. So you're going to use those little lines with, from your pencil that you drew as a guide for where you're going to sculpt your acrylic and do not go over the top of those areas. So you don't want to have any acrylic over your magnets that is the, the pizza crust color. You want to have it just be clear at this point. So as you're sculpting out your pizza crust, you're going to add a thin layer of whatever your crust color may be, kind of a taupey or not really taupe, but just like a, a beige color. And then add the thickness of the crust around the cuticle area. This is one of those fantastic designs that doesn't really have much filing in it because all of the, everything you're sculpting just kind of adds to the final effect. So you don't have to do a whole bunch of sculpting, which I personally love. I think that's su super helpful just to not have to do that big step of filing and filing and filing. After you have your crust done around the cuticle, use a little bit of a golden color to add some very like kind of freshly baked glow to it. And then sculpt your sauce with red. Now you're going to grab a piece of aluminum foil and you're going to very, very tightly wrap the tip of the nail with the aluminum foil so that it goes right around all of the different curves of where you have your bites taken out of. Then using the same colors that you use to sculpt the crust and the sauce of your pizza, you're going to be sculpting the different sections of where the bites have come out. So you've got your two different bites of pizza that you're going to be sculpting if you're doing the same number as me. Otherwise, if you're doing more, obviously more, but you're going to sculpt the two sections being very, very careful not to let them touch. You need to leave the tiniest little bit of space between where the two, bite, the two bites of the pizza are coming out of. And the thinner that that little space is, the more flawless it's going to look at the end. However, the better your chances of accidentally sticking them together is when you're adding your sauce and your cheese and your toppings. So it's a fine balance between how it's going to look in the end and making sure that it 
actually stays in separate pieces so that you can have the fun of taking the different bites off. So after you have your sauce on, then you're going, or after you have your crust down, then you're going to add your, your sauce and then you're going to use cheese. For the cheese, to give it kind of the best color, I thought I used a two-tone bead of acrylic that is white and a very pale yellow. So I grabbed first a little bit of white on my brush and then I dipped it one dunk into yellow, swirled it around slightly and it gives you just that kind of variegated mozzarella look. After you've done the first slice, you're going to repeat the process and do the other slice again. Just be really careful not to glue them together. If a little bit of sauce sticks through, a little bit of crust, a little bit of something does, I don't really think that's the worst thing, either between like the grooves of where the different slices are or just in general, if you know, a little bit of something pokes through, especially like the sauce, I think that really helps because otherwise what's the point of sculpting the sauce if you don't even get to see that it's there. After those have set up, you can pop them off the aluminum foil and set them to the side and make sure that they fit on the nail, but then add your cheese over the top of the sauce of your pizza. Do not completely cover up the sauce all the way to the crust. Leave a, just a glow of a gap so that again, we know that there is sauce there. We want there to be that you know effect. And if you didn't sculpt the sauce, I think it would be very obvious. I think you would know. I think somewhere along the lines would be like, yeah, that looks like it needs some needs some marinara on this on this pie. After you have that done, again, make sure that you fit those two other bites onto the nail to make sure that they do fit properly. After they are there, leave them there for right now and we're going to start sculpting all of our toppings. This is so much fun. Everybody has a personalized pizza preference. There are so many different things and there's so many different cultural things, even within the United States where, where I live, we love green olives, not just like me, but um, there's every pizza restaurant you can get green olives and it's really common. But in a lot of places where I've traveled, it is not common to have green olives on your pizza. And there's just a whole bunch of different things. I know fresh tomatoes are really popular in California, not so much here. Um, you know, just all of those different things. And you can personalize your pizza. You can do some weird things if you wanted that maybe you wouldn't ever put on pizza. There's also the fun stuff of like, I know there's a couple different pizza restaurants where I live where you can get mac and cheese pizza or like chicken and waffle pizza and all of these different ones. And if you wanted to and you wanted to do something crazy, that would also be a fun way to just top your pizza in a out of the box, in an out of the box style. So I'm going to actually keep mine pretty traditional and I'm going to make it a veggie pizza that's got some green peppers and some tomatoes and some mushrooms. So as I'm sculpting all of these different little pieces, when you go up and over where the bites are, you have to be really careful, just like with everything else, you don't want to cover up or make a bridge from the nail to one of the pieces or between the pieces themselves. You don't want to make it so that they get glued together. You need to keep them separate. And so possibly what would help is if you took a little craft knife and right after you sculpted whatever piece it is, once it starts to turn kind of matte and it loses its sheen, just take that little craft knife and slice it if it does seem like it might have attached to itself. If that is something that works, that's a great way to do it. Otherwise, if you want to just be really careful and not let them touch, that is kind of the route I'm taking. However, you just have to, like I said a bunch of times in this video before, you have to take a, a balance between how close can you get it so it's, you know, it looks really good and then you don't want it to stick. I'm going to be adding a little bit of shading on my mushrooms with a darker shade of brown. On top of my little slices of tomato, I did take a white acrylic and just add a little bit of a glow of white inside of them. It doesn't really show that much in the video, but it does add a lot of detail in person, just brings out the color in the middle, making them look a little more realistic. And then, like I said, I am an olive lover person, especially on pizza. I think that they are a necessary ingredient for pizza. In fact, our typical pizza order in my household is olives and cheese, and that's it. We get two kinds of olives. We get green and black olives. But since I already have something green on this pizza with the green peppers, we're going to go with black olives. And they're so easy. Just put a little bead of black acrylic down after it's just cured for a moment. Then you can take a dotting tool dipped into some acrylic powder, probably white or not white, probably clear acrylic powder and press into the center and you'll get that little, that little circle for your olives. And then after you've topped your pizza with however many toppings you want, I'm going to apply a 3D glaze over the top to give it a very slight glow, a little bit of shininess, not too much. You don't have to be careful and get it everywhere. You just kind of want to apply it, you know, over the top sparingly. That'll give you the kind of greasiness that pizza just inherently has. I hope you guys like this design as much as I do. I believe this is my one and only food related video where I've had more than one bite taken out of something. And now that I revisited this design and I revisited this video, I think I'm gonna have to make some more of them because they're just fun. And I like the challenge of keeping all the pieces separate and yet as close together as possible. If you guys decide to try it out and recreate it, I would love to see. Please share pictures with me on Facebook or Instagram and I will see you all next time. Bye.